Good morning. Welcome to the barber shop. Come on in. How you doing today? Hope you're well. We're talking about listening closely once more. Uh, I think this is week three, and if you are at Harvest Church on Sunday morning, you may hear something a little bit familiar. Thankful for the opportunity to bring the word and share with you uh, both today and on Sunday. So good morning to you. What you got planned this weekend? How are things going? Hey, good morning, Sally. Hope you're well. Good morning, Kelly. Good to see you today. I'm waiting on my computer to, to load. So this, uh, this small talk interaction is, is helpful. Good morning, Christine. How are you? I love that you always uh, include an emoji in your comment. That's awesome. <laughs> At the barbershop, we're talking about listening closely. We'll do a little bit of a review in uh, uh, just a few moments as folks hop on. Brian, good to see you. Janet, how are you? Love it. How's my audio? It looks like the video may have a little bit of a lag. Um, might look like a, uh, a karate film, a Bruce Lee film of old. Um, I hope that's not the case on your end. It looks a little, looks a little funny. Yeah, good morning, computer. <laughs> yeah, as I wait for this thing to, to boot up. Uh, might be helpful to, to do an upgrade here. <laughs> good morning, Gail. Okay, good, good, Christine. Thanks for the feedback on that. All right, so so tell me, maybe if you could help me review a little bit. Tell me, you know, what have you learned of, over the past couple of weeks as we've gathered and talked at the barber shop? What have you learned about listening closely? Maybe something that you remember. If uh, those of you who have been on with me for the past couple of weeks, we've talked about a, a few things, and um, just maybe help your fellow. Facebooker out with a little review point here or there. What do you remember? See, this is the challenging part. Hey, Kiki, um, that I am Superman. So there's some hints, right? Oh, I'm, I'm reversed. So boom, back there. I am Superman. Um, thank you, Sally. That's awesome. Um, Superman's my favorite. My uh, so at my office at the at the church back at Good News. I had Superman paraphernalia, memorabilia everywhere. This is just a small glimpse of it right behind me. Um, but at last count, I think we had 60 plus Superman items in that office. It's, uh, yeah, it's a, kind of an obsession. <laughs> I do have a superhero room. That's right. I've got so many uh, superhero Superman gadgets in here. Janet, proximity. Yes. Proximity is key, right? We talked about coming close, drawing near to the Father in order to hear him whisper to us, right? Thank you for that, Janet. Good morning, Fredna. This is great. All right, my notes are up. I'm going to help you with review. If you, if you have some stuff as we review a little bit, please chime in and uh, let me know what you remember. What you've put into practice may be a... Better question, because it's not just about knowing, but it's about doing. What are you doing with what you know? That's where the application comes in, and that's where the transformation takes place. Isn't that right? Can I get a clickety-clickety amen in the comment section? All right, here we go. Review time. We're going to look at, first of all, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. I think we could just camp out there for a little bit. Listen carefully to my words. So many people would say that they listen to the words of Christ or the words of the Lord, but do they listen carefully? Is there an attention to his word? Verse 21 says, don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. And then verse um, uh Proverbs 4, verse 23 talks about guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Out of it flow the issues of life, right? And so we said that in context, that idea that 
if the word, if the words of Christ are, and the words of the Lord are penetrating, are penetrating deep into your heart, that's all the more reason to guard your heart because, um, and just, this just came to my mind, is that the enemy does what? His MO is to steal, kill, and destroy, right? And so when you hear a word, when you hear a word on a Sunday morning, a Wednesday night, a daily devotion, when you hear that word, what does the in enemy try to do and attempt to do? Well, Mark chapter 4 would tell us he immediately tries to come and steal that word. That's his MO. That's his operation. That's his mode of Modus operandi. I don't know if I said that right, but it, that's his mode of operation is to steal, kill, and destroy. And so it makes sense that if the word that you hear uh, may take root into your soul, into your heart, as you water it, as you meditate on it, that the enemy wants to do whatever he can to steal that word immediately. And so you see, of course, in, in Mark chapter 4, you see the four different types of soil um, I dare not try to repeat them from memory, <laughs> lest I miss one. Uh, but you can go read that. But the, in, in, the enemy's MO is to steal. And so why would we guard our heart? We guard our heart because it is the wellspring of life. It is that place where the word is implanted and penetrates deep into in order to produce application and then transformation. So we're listening. And proximity matters, right, Janet? Thank you for saying that. Kelly, giving your worries to the Lord. Absolutely. And then um, how does the Lord speak? Does he speak in a thunderous boom? Or does he speak in a still, small voice, a gentle whisper? And we reference this, but I haven't read it yet to you. This is 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 and 12 in the message. And it says, then he was told, this is Elijah, um, after he had defeated the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel, he is on the run for his life. You say, why would he be on the run for his life? Well, the evil queen is after him. And so he's there and he's like um, waiting for instruction from the Lord. And so here's where we pick it up. Uh, verse 11, it says, Then he was told, Go stand on the mountain at attention before God. God will pass by. A hurricane wind ripped through the mountains and shattered the rocks before God, but God wasn't to be found in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake, but God wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, fire, but God wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, what? A gentle and quiet whisper. A gentle and quiet whisper. And that's why that proximity matters is because God speaks in whispers. He wants to, he wants to you to draw near to him, and therefore he draws near to you. And so the idea is that we come into close nearness to him so that he can whisper those things to our spirit, to the ear of our heart, right? And then I read Isaiah 55, 3, the New Living Translation. I love this. Come to me with your ears wide open. Ah, listen, and you will find what? You will find life. You'll find life. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, he says. I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. And so you see this continually in Scripture, this idea that we need to listen closely. We need to tune our ears to the Lord. And um, if this sounds familiar, it's because there is some repetition in it. And I heard um, someone once say that repetition is the motor of learning. And I'll repeat that. Repetition is the motor of learning. Amen. And so it's important to hear and hear again. Uh, that's why it says, I think it's Romans 10, 17, that faith comes how? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't think it's a coincidence that he wrote that word hearing twice. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So uh, I wanted to illustrate this for you. I think this might help you out a little bit. Kelly, you've had the miracle of hearing the Lord answer. Oh, it, it disappeared. Thunderously answer your prayer once, but mostly you hear him in your heart. That's exactly right. And there's different ways that the Lord speaks to us, right? And so we can maybe go over some of that. It's the inward witness. There's that still small voice, your conscience. And then there's that, maybe this, um, not necessarily an audible voice, but like a stronger voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And I've certainly had those times in my life, although they are um, 
maybe the rare exception because genuinely, generally, he speaks through that inward witness, that gentle nudge, that peace in your heart, that um, nudging uh, by the Holy Spirit. And so that you either have what's, uh, we would call it a green light or a red light. A green light is this kind of smooth, like I've got peace. There's peace in this decision as I move forward. And then the red light would be the kind of the scratchy feeling on the inside. It's like, I don't feel right about this. This doesn't feel or seem right, as the uh, apostles would write in the book of Acts. Uh, decisions that they would make would seem right. All right? A little teaching there. So what I have here is a... Boom box. Oh yeah, remember you remember like the, the, the old days? Uh, you could just hold this up by your ear and you could just kind of jam down the street. I have a boom box here, and this is the one that my wife uses when she when, when she paints. And this was before the days of MP3 players and uh, just where you had Spotify and, and Apple Music and all that, uh, Pandora, all these different things. You had to you had to tune in to what was called the radio. <laughs> I know everybody on here remembers it, but the younger generation is like, what's radio? I don't listen to radio. I listen to Spotify. I listen to Apple Music. Um, but radio is a thing. <laughs> Brian, you know what I'm talking about? Radio is a thing. So I have a radio here, and this actually has a tuner. The antenna is broken off because it's, it's old, but usually you would have this antenna that would help you get better reception for the frequency of the signals that are coming from the radio stations. So I have this, and so it's it's important to tune your ear to the voice of the Father, just as if you want to listen to a radio station, you have to tune the dial, and I've got a little dial here, and I'm gonna illustrate this for you because I got it plugged in. It's, it's, this actually works. I don't know, this is probably like from the 90s, but this actually still works. Hey, okay, so let's try it. So there's radio. So what do we have now? We have a bunch of static, right? We're not tuned in. Can you hear me? We're not tuned in to any frequency. Do you hear the static? Sounds horrible, doesn't it? Like there's there's something trying to come through, but it's not quite coming through because there's a bunch of static and surrounding noise. Do you get the illustration here? There's all kinds of distractions, all kinds of static and, and interference coming in. <laughs> yeah, carried it over the shoulders uh, for sure. But you had to have great batteries, like D batteries, uh, and lots of them. And so, but the thing is, if I tune, if I tune this dial, we'll get something a little different. So then we, then we can tune into the Christian station. I'm not going to keep that running because they may turn us off. Facebook might kick us off because of copyright stuff, whatever. So you get the idea that as long as I'm tuned into that station on that frequency, I can hear clearly the, um, the the signal that it's putting out, right? I can hear the song clearly. I can hear the DJ clearly. I can hear the uh, commercials clearly. I can hear everything that's coming through as long as I'm tuned in. If I'm not tuned into that station and the right frequency, then all I'm going to hear is static, static. So we have to be tuned into the frequency of the Spirit. And I would say that just like I said last week is that when we tune our ear to the voice of the Lord, we're tuning our ear to the scripture. Primarily, we're tuning our ear to the word of God because God will never contradict his written word. The voice of the Holy Spirit will never contradict his written word. Never. If you feel like something's spoken to you to tell you to steal something, you can rest assured that's not God. If you feel like something's influencing you to hurt someone, in some way, shape, or form, that's not God. Why? Because it contradicts with the word. I know that's kind of like a blatant example, but there are things that may would try to, to influence you, that static would try to influence you to do something contrary to the written word of God, and that's why you've got to tune your ear uh, first off to the written word, the sayings of Jesus, right? Let those hide in your heart and penetrate deep into your heart. I read this last week, John 10, 3. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him, calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he's gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him. Why? Because they know his voice. They've come, become so familiar with his voice. And uh, those of you who are my generation or uh, above, you would remember this, that there were days when 
phones did not have caller ID. Do you remember those days when you would hear the phone ring and you would have no idea who it was? And so it could be, it could be the bill collectors. And so you couldn't necessarily screen those calls. Now, when we got the answering machine, the answering machine allowed us to screen those calls because we would have them leave a message. And then if we recognized who it was, what would we do? If we wanted to talk to them, we'd pick up the phone and say, no, 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 I'm here. I'm here. What do you need? Or we'd call them back, right? But there were days when the phones did not have caller ID. So you had no idea who it was that's, that's calling. And so when the phone would ring, you would pick it up most of the time with great anticipation. I know when I was a middle schooler and I thought there may be the chance, the off chance, the, 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 the infinitesimal ch chance that, that's probably not the right word, but like this sliver of hope that it might be a girl from middle school calling me. I would run to the phone with anticipation. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. And you'd run and you'd pick up the phone and you would immediately, because if you spent time, if you had your little girlfriend or boyfriend and they, you, they called you all the time or you called them, you would immediately know who it is when they said one word. Hello. Hello. Hey. hey oh. You would immediately know who it is. Why? Because you recognize their voice. But if you didn't recognize their voice um, and they didn't introduce themselves, what would you say? Who is this? Who is this? What do you want? Why are you calling? Because you didn't recognize their voice. But if it was grandma, she's calling. Talk to her grandson. Answer the phone. Hey, baby. Grandma, how are you? I miss you. You, you know what I mean? If it's your significant other. You recognize them immediately before caller ID. Why? With just one word, because you know their voice. You've become so familiar with their voice. Hey, Pastor Antoine, you've become so familiar with their voice that you recognize it with one single word. And that, that, my friends, is how familiar we need to be with the voice of the shepherd, our good shepherd, the Father, Jesus Christ. Um, says he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. He's leading us. He's leading us, he's calling, he's crying out our name, and we gotta be familiar with his voice. Because the other scripture says, the voice of the stranger we will not follow. If we hear somebody else calling our name, we hear some other voice calling our name, we will not follow that voice because we don't recognize that voice. It's a strange voice. We gotta be so familiar with the Father's voice that we know, hey, that's God speaking. I've heard people say this, well, I don't know if that was me or if it was God or if it was the devil speaking to me or trying to influence me. Well, it tells me, it's an indicator that, man, I gotta get, you gotta get more time in the word because if you don't know that it's your father's voice speaking to you, then you haven't become as familiar with that voice as you ought to be. And that's not an indictment, it's an invitation. It's an invitation to draw near. Amen, amen. Oh, that's great for an, an analogy is that even our pets know our voices very well. Uh, and even Janet kind of hits on that, that one word come. Um, come, my, my uh, sister-in-law and brother-in-law have a dog named Bailey that we got to spend some time with uh, a little bit. And they've got this uh, dog feeder thing that's like electronic. And the cool thing about it is like every morning it would release Bailey's food and it's got an audio piece to it. This, this dog uh, feeder is just amazing. It's electronic, it's automatic. It, it, every morning at nine, it releases the amount of food that Bailey, that Bailey needs. And then it's uh, Uncle, Uncle David, Uncle David's voice, my brother-in-law David, his voice saying, Bailey, come eat, Bailey, come eat. And uh, of course there's, you know, Pavlov's conditioning and that whole thing psychologically that works for them. But the point is that Bailey knows David's voice. When David says, come, Bailey, recognizes the voice. Thank you for your help there, Fredna and Janet, um, with this analogy. So, uh, one more little story, an illustration, and then we'll sing a little bit. I won't keep you much longer. Um, let me share this with you. I was putting Adelie to bed. My, Adelie's my six-year-old. She's my middle child. And uh, so I've been putting, taking her to bed for, <laughs> for years. And uh, she is, would be admittedly a daddy's girl. And so my duty and my joy is to put her to bed each night. And 
I I go in there, you know, sometimes we'll read a story, sometimes we'll we'll play a game and take a swig. And uh, then she'll lay there and I'll sit with her. And, um, you know, parents, psychology and all that kind of stuff, people do it different ways. So I'll sit with her for a bit. And so I hear her and she's got the white noise machine in, in her room. I've got, at this point, uh, I've got headphones in my ears because I'm listening. Actually, I think it was Wednesday night. I was actually listening to the to Wednesday night church um, and uh, Pastor Larry's message, which was fantastic. And so I'm listening to that and then I hear Adelie say, Daddy, 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 what's that noise? I said, oh, you're probably hearing my headphones. And I, I'll turn it down a little bit. And so she's, she goes, no, Daddy, Daddy, what's that noise? So I turn, I take off my headphones. I kind of turn off the white noise machine and I listen for a little bit. And she's like, it sounds, it sounds funny. What is that? And as I, as I listen and I get quiet for a moment, I recognize it's a cricket. You know the voice of a cricket? Chirp, 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 chirp. It's a cricket in her room. And so at that point, she's like, I definitely am not sleeping in this room because once I explain to her that it's a cricket, she thinks this cricket's going to get me in the middle of my uh, of the night in my sleep. This cricket, this cricket's after me. It sounds scary. Why is it? Why is it making this noise? Um, and it's an it's a bug, right? And so, uh, but the idea is that okay, I'm gonna I am gonna catch this cricket. No, no cricket's going to get my daughter. I'm gonna man up, catch this cricket. And so, what do we do? We turn everything off, and I say, shh. shh, shh listen, listen closely, listen. And we're trying to identify the location of this cricket so we can narrow down where it's at, so we can shine a light and capture it and set it free. And um, so we we do that, we shut everything off and I'm listening and we'd hear it, we'd hear it. And then we'd get to near to where it was at and I'd move some stuff around and then we wouldn't hear it anymore. And eventually it got quiet to the point where I was like, okay, I'm tired, you're tired, just you know, sleep downstairs or sleep in your brother's room or sleep wherever. I don't care where you sleep, just go to sleep. I'm tired right now. We'll deal with the cricket tomorrow. But the whole point is that I didn't hear the cricket. I didn't hear the cricket initially. Adelie heard the cricket even over the white noise machine, but I didn't hear it because I had something stuffed into my ears. I wasn't paying attention to a cricket. But when I started to pay attention for the the noise of the cricket, my ear was starting to tune itself to that and to the point where I was actually listening for it. Oh, are we that attuned to the ear, to the voice of the Father, that we actually are listening for it, that we are stilling everything else, quieting everything else, and tuning our ear to the voice of the Father? <sighs> That's where we need to be. That's where we got to be. So, got more I can say come Sunday. I uh, have the honor and great privilege of sharing the word on Sunday. We'll be talking about this in greater detail because I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've uh, maybe been uh, spoken to by the voice of the Father over these last few weeks. And so we'll just kind of um, put a put a bow around it and tie it up on Sunday. Maybe some, some repetitiveness to what we've already shared, but um, it's helpful to me. So... Um, I got a, a song I want to sing. I want us to sing together. And, and I've been on this old school click, kick lately because maybe the, the anniversary, we were looking up 90s songs to sing for the, uh, the church anniversary. And so here's another one, kind of old school, that you might remember. It's called I Want to Know You. I think this came out in 1999. Band named Sonic Flood. She was great in the youth days. In the quiet place, in the stillness, you are there. In the secret, in the quiet hour, I wait only for you. So I want to know you more. I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. <laughs> I want to touch you. I want to see your face, I want to know you more I'm reaching for the highest goal That I might 
might receive the prize. Pressing onward, pushing every hindrance aside, out of my way, cause I want to know you Righteousness, that we would know you, that we would hear your voice. Ah, that's the prayer, that's the cry of our heart. To excel in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. To excel in the intimacy of knowing you, Father. May that be our prayer today and every day. Hallelujah. Lord, I want more. Living water rain down on me. Lord, I need more of you. Living breath of life, come fill me up. We are home. Thirsty. 
lifts our voices higher and higher and higher to We lift our holy hands up. We want to touch you. We lift our voices higher. of our day. Tuning in, leaning in, listening closely, paying attention to your words, and let them penetrate deep into our heart to bring about transformation. We thank you for it. We thank you for this time in your presence, Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, friends, for tuning in today. A few announcements as we wrap things up. I just want to remind you that uh, X Factor X Factor is up tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Of course, we've got the Love Your Neighbor Initiative, prayer walking, riding around our neighborhoods, praying for our neighbors to come to know Jesus. And we also have, coming up in a few weeks, connect groups are starting back up. So we've got online, we've got in person, and of course, we've got the uh, harvest at home, and I'm sure I'm missing something there because I have it right in front of me. But if you want more information about that, you can email Ruth Cannon, ruth.cannon at the-harvest.org. If you want to lead a group um, or if you want to be a part of one, I'm sure we're going to be rolling out information about which groups are available. And uh, my wife and I are excited about hosting one here at our place, TBD. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for, for tuning in and, and, um, as you've been tuning in to, to listen to my voice today, I pray that you would continue to listen to the voice of the Father because His voice should be the most important voice in your life. So, blessings to you. If you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out to me, Nate, at lifegivers.co. Happy to uh, engage with you, pray for you in, in whatever way we can. So, blessings to you. Have a great weekend. Bye. See you Sunday.